Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today, guys, we have a very cool giveaway to announce. Actually, there is two, but one is already ongoing. I have a 3000 XRP giveaway. If you want to join, all you have to do for right now is make sure you press that like button and join the Telegram. A link is down below. I am not exactly sure yet how I'm going to be giving it away, but I got myself the 3000 XRP2 giveaway. So let's think together about this one. How do we pick a winner or how do we pick a couple of winners? Let me know in Telegram. Link is down below. And yes, as I said, today I have a ton of crypto news. We have XRP, Cardano, literally every single crypto. And oh boy, oh boy, we have a couple of bangers in terms of crypto stuff. Like what? A teen arrested for stealing $36 million worth of... What? Yeah, we have some crazy, crazy stuff. Also, I want to quickly announce that after this video, there's going to be another update on how to get yourself some hands on free crypto airdrops. So if you like free money, make sure you subscribe to the channel because that's going to be the next video coming out in a couple of hours from now. Woo! Having said that, let's cover this stuff, huh? We talked a little bit earlier about Gino Pets. It was pretty interesting. So Gino was basically a crypto we bought over on Bybit, and apparently it did 26,000% here. Well, not really. I mean, if we look at the actual price, it didn't do that well. It hit about 40 or something dollars over on FTX. On Bybit, it never even got that high. It only hit about $20 or so because it launched like 15 minutes later over on this platform for some reason. Now, this was a little bit of a letdown to some degree. We did have a different coin that did pretty well. This coin launched at about two cents right now at about 28. Also pretty damn nice. But of course, we have the track record of getting a couple of coins really, really right with some crazy gains. And I do still believe, guys, that there's going to be more and more coins over on this channel that are going to be going insane. There's two planned for November, and all you have to do to get into those ones or know all the steps is make sure you are subscribed to the channel. All right, let's cover the news without wasting too much time. I had a lot of stuff on XP airdrops and whatnot at the start here, but I guess we can kind of skip that for later. Let's move on into our first XRP article, which is that a lot of XRP just got moved. I actually get quite a lot of people sending me articles about this, uh, asking me, hey, what do you think about this? Is this a bad thing? Is this a good thing? What does it mean? An undisclosed XRP wallet decided to withdraw a large volume of XRP from centralized exchanges as part of the global exchange outflow trend. Now, whenever you see an article like this, guys, see it as a bullish thing. Not necessarily because it's been moved from an exchange, but because it's been moved from an exchange to an unknown wallet. That's the key that makes this a positive encounter or endeavor or whatever you want to call it. Moving XRP from exchange to exchange has a net flow of zero. Taking it from an exchange and putting it into an unknown wallet is an outflow, which basically means there's less selling pressure on the exchange in theory. Now, CoinGape. This exchange continues XRP listing while Ripple could potentially fold the settlement. Of course, a little bit of a, I'm going to call it a little bit of a skewed article, to be honest with you, because the title is a little bit enticing. But it basically says here that Tig XRP put up a little thank you over on Twitter, which got a lot of attention. Don't forget the exchange that stood by the customers. Thank you, Uphold, as Uphold is one of the only exchanges out there that really still, as of this day, supports XRP over in the United States through thick and thin. And I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I do also appreciate them for sticking with and for basically keeping up the keeping up the strong appearance towards the SEC of saying, hey, we don't like to take this BS. If you want to take us down, take us down. But we don't think that your complaint, the SEC's complaint, is adjudicated to legally determine that XRP is currently a security or until trading volume dissipates, dissip, dissipates to a point where we can no longer support it. But as of this point, this is just a complaint. The SEC is alleging something. It doesn't mean it is fact or law. And specifically because we all say nobody can actually really know. I think this is a really nice stance from Uphold. And we should really give him a thumbs up for this one. A really big thumbs up, Uphold. We appreciate you. Really big thumbs up. Then, guys, we're going to move over into India. Let me know in the comment section down below where you're watching this video from. I always enjoy that. India's prime minister warns that Bitcoin could spoil young Indians. Ooh, so what does that mean? Well, apparently, 
It is important that all democratic nations work together on this to ensure that it does not end up in the wrong hands, which can spoil our youths. Okay. Interesting. He's basically talking about that it requires a lot of oversight from the government and central banks. Otherwise, it might mess people up. Not exactly sure how that's supposed to be the case. Then again, let them have their own opinion is all I say about these things. You know, as long as they're not saying, oh, we're going to ban it. I'm all up for it. Whatever rules and whatever restrictions you want to put up on it, it's all fine. All right. And spoiling, I don't, I don't really think that's the way it works. But hey, everybody should be allowed to have their own opinion. Then we have the Gemini twins, the Winklevoss ones. All right, all right, all right. So the twins said, or basically raised $400 million to build a metaverse outside of Facebook's walled garden. I always get excited whenever I see these types of things because metaverse right now is one of the hottest subjects. I've been calling it out time and time and time again. People often want to kind of come back at me say, no, Dusty, you got to buy crypto. You don't buy metaverse. Metaverse is going to ruin the blah, 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 blah. Maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe everything you say is right. But that does not mean that metaverse coins in the crypto space right now are really destroying. They're doing so amazing and I'm going to keep buying them till my bitter freaking end. Because right now, it has a good part of my portfolio as I just believe in it to the core, guys. I believe in it, believe in it, believing it. Look at this. We've been calling out these coins for a very good while over on the channel. Look at Decentraland. Boom. We called it out, I don't know, like uh, over the last couple of days, we've been calling it out very often on the channel here. There's a lot of Metaverse videos on here, a lot of them, and that's because I am so excited about these coins. It's 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 so, they're just juicy. Now, Decentraland is at $3.60. The Sandbox even hit like $3 or $4.40 or $40.30 today, doing really, really amazing. And that's, of course, because there's more and more events which are going to be coming onto these platforms. But literally yesterday, I told you guys once more that I am going to be buying it and that I'm excited about it. Not exactly sure which video it was yesterday. Let's quickly see. Here it was. Eight, um, okay, we actually have to refresh because it's not eight hours ago. A couple of hours ago, a couple of, I think a day and a, a little bit ago. We we talked here. Here even 22 hours ago as well. Here two times we talked about these coins just doing amazing. And I even played the little the Mana Decentraland game here for a little second to show you guys what is right now built in the crypto verse. This is Decentraland. This is what it looks like. The crypto, the app. It's crazy, you know, it's, it's really fun. It's really strange how, how far this technology is getting and how usable it really is, and people can actually watch that. So this is a really good, good, good step, I think, because it's connecting crypto and metaverse once more. Really nice. Now, the U.S. is not moving fast enough to develop a CBDC. Says former CFTC chair. Now, um, can, I actually, can I actually confirm? No. It just says here, we should act now to improve access to financial services through our mean, other means as well. The need is too great, said Tim Massad. I don't know. I, I kind of consider all these things a little bit bs because it's, it's just one opinion against another. The U.S. will build a CBDC. It'll come out eventually. It just takes time. Whether or not they're slow about it, it's really not that relevant. It just says here, it could be one of the solutions. Um, but actually, wait, let's actually read it a little bit more. In a Wednesday hearing of the Joint Economic Committee on the Role of Digital Assets in Government, Massad said a... Central bank digital currency, or CBC, could be one solution for the U.S. to improve its existing payment system, which he referred to as slow and expensive. In addition, the former CFTC chair said while stablecoins could be used for this purpose, they also represent or present some of the most urgent challenges for U.S. regulators and pose significant risks, which everybody understands. So we can go further and further into all of this, but at the end of the day, there's so many options, there's so many ways they can go about it. The need is great, we all know it. It'll come. So this title, I also think, is a little bit skewed. As it will just happen, and, and what is what is slow, right? To find that, it's difficult to say. Cardano! We have a big part about Cardano here, guys. Big part about Cardano. Lots of news coming out right now. And uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to title this little part, but let's see. Cardano founder blames the recent crypto bear on the infrastructure bill. Like I also have told you guys before, I believe that the regulatory update basically is just negative, 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 which is why the crypto prices have come down. That's also what the founder of Cardano says. Now, from another perspective, Cardano's founder's idea of a future metaverse is also pretty damn juicy. I think there would be really cool experiment to, with that kind of stuff and build. While investors are considering to the metaverse to be the next big opportunity, the government of Barbados has gone ahead to create the world's first metaverse embassy. Let me see if I have that. I have it open right here. Barbados becomes the first world or the first country in the entire world to basically build the metaverse um, embassy. Let me actually type in a little timestamp here, Barbados. 
Barbados has become the first country globally with an embassy in the metaverse, and Charles Hoskins is basically talking about that entire part of, 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 of kind of seeing the, how, how can you say it? I guess of, of seeing things expand. Web3 is not just a thin layer, but it's also a vertical where you actually have this metaverse what lives above it. So, yeah, I don't really need to add more here, guys. What is crypto's role in the metaverse? Well, you kind of need a control layer for logic of these things and a database for these types of things to enforce scarcity, uniqueness, and that's where the whole NFTs come into play. It's such a big ordeal. I cannot... Metaverse is going to become, in the next five to ten years, I think a humongous product category for crypto. Crypto, it's something that uh, puts power back in the hands of the people. I keep sharing it, guys. This is good. Oh, this is such amazing technology. I, I really honestly believe in the power of this, and I'm fully for it. I'm fully, fully for it and investing really heavily into it. Now, besides that, uh, more Cardano stuff. Let me quickly put in a little timestamp here. I got to keep that up. You know, as I, as I keep the timestamps in, you guys say that's a really good thing, but it's a little bit difficult. Now, Cardano on-chain transaction volume briefly doubled that of Ethereum data shows. Most active chains last 24 hours. With 18.24 in transaction volume, Cardano is currently the second most active chain in the last 24 hours after Bitcoin. I saw a couple of people being really critical, saying, oh, yeah, this is just because Cardano transactions are cheaper, so... Well, it's still pretty damn huge. <laughs> Whatever you want to put there as criticism, this is amazing news to have. This is very, very nice. And also, XP is still on this top list, which I didn't actually expect. I kind of expected them to kind of leave it out. But this is really good stuff, guys. This is really juicy to read. All right, then, Dogecoin killer Shiba Inu. Ooh, what's going on? Well, Dogecoin killer Shiba Inu is integrated by one of the leading crypto payment processors. I'm never really too excited about this type of things because even though CoinGate here integrated them, who gives a, you know, who gives? It's only, only, only about Robinhood listing. Shiba Inu, Robinhood, it's, it's things that kind of belong together. And since we don't have that yet, I'm not too hyped up. I'm waiting for Robinhood, which I still think is going to be one of the craziest events in cryptocurrency as it could pump these prices to the freaking moon. To stay on the Shiba Inu department, McDonald's replied to Shiba holders asking for Shiba Inu payments and the Shiba army can't cope. Well, they just basically said, we're looking for it or we're looking into it, kind of. You know, they said, accept Shiba Inu, please. And they said, we appreciate hearing your interest and continuously evaluate the payment experience, which was their end result. They didn't say anything more. So, I mean, I can't say it's a negative thing, you know? I can't say it's a positive thing, but it's neutral. So that's good, I guess, in this sense. By the way, guys, there's more launches coming on the channel. And if you want to ask questions about that type of stuff, make sure you join the Telegram. It's going rather quickly. You know, I'm always excited to see how many people have actually joined up over the last couple of days. Make sure you join that. And if you haven't used it before, make sure you check out Bybit. As right there, there's a couple of really crazy things going on. There's huge deposit bonuses, but also there's a $1 million NFT type of giveaway where there's actually... a uh, a freaking couple of bored apes that you can win. It's a lot of money, you know, and, and all you need is $10. You need to trade with $10 worth. So I think it's pretty damn juicy that this is going on right now. So make sure you check that out as well. All right, then random people buying the Constitution as a meme is the future of everything. I just showed you this stuff because NFTs, as I've told you guys before, is a really big deal. And right now, we're seeing another real literal use case here. Buying the Constitution is about a lot more than buying the Constitution. Is that a good thing? It's about the fact that people are actually going for this type of NFT realm right now. It's, it's growing. It's, it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's the idea that all of this stuff, all this crypto stuff, can, can be used for so much more than we right now think. It's not only about this little small piece of art. We also talked about the fact that you can actually uh, basically store votes in NFT types of manners and you can help vote by by staking coins for example or staking nfts there's so much that's going to come out of this i mean nft real estate there's so much I, I keep sharing that with you guys there's going to be so 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 much now there's also different ways in which this could actually work it doesn't actually have to be an nft it, there's multiple ways in which they could actually buy it here it says that they're trying to buy a copy of the u.s constitution uh, so far the group called constitution dow has raised 13 million dollars in a matter of days from strangers online many of whom donated modest amounts with notes attached saying uh, populist things like, here to rug billionaire private collectors, Wagmi, crypto speak for we are going to make it, and the newly co uh, coined Wag BTC, we're going to buy the constitution and even the lyrics to the socialist, uh, okay, whatever. So here it is actually one company that are, uh, or one DAO, so basically a, I can't really call it a company, I guess, huh? One structure, the centralized structure, autonomous, is trying to buy it 
uh, but even I, I'm, at least I'm thinking about it as an NFT type of thing, you know, where you can actually basically get yourself a copy of this as an NFT. It's just a huge application that we can kind of think about here as a as a, as a thing that people would want to have and, and go for. In this specific case here, people are in the crypto space are trying to buy this thing, which is also pretty interesting if you ask me. It's, it's all cool stuff, man. I get excited about this type of thing, even though my, some people might think it's nothing. I get excited. So talk about sand. Uh, I should actually put that in as constitution. To talk about sand here, they just have an event happening the 29th of uh, November here. They basically got a online metaverse event. It's the first time that the gates have opened, basically. So it's, of course, a really big launch. And that's, of course, why people are buying Sandbox right now. And why the price went so insane. It's this very simple one. <coughs> then Ethereum. The network to hit 1 million burn coins in the next few days. Am I excited about that? No, because it was already bound to happen. And Ethereum is just burning more and more and more as it became deflationary. Uh, so the actual numbers that it hit are not really a big deal to me, except for the fact when you look at it like this, you know, when you look at the fact that it's a freaking million Ethereum, and like this, like, oh, it's growing, it's almost at a million. Yeah, okay, then it kind of hits me, but just somebody saying, oh, it's a million, I'm like, well, what does that matter? But looking at it like that, so much money, is just being thrown away, just burned, makes it really, makes it really heavily deflationary, you know, it's like a 1% has been burned in total of all the coins out there right now sort of like that's what it, uh, it feels it feels better to kind of see it like this in the overview after of course the 1559 launch which wasn't actually too long ago solana is now the most staked crypto asset by value also not too big of a deal except for the fact that this is really bullish stuff for solana you know that they're really growing this quickly i don't think anybody could have ever expected that so here's in staked value we can check it out here of course the rewards are pretty nice about seven percent or so that you get uh, polka dot however is a lot better 14 percent. that is amazing stuff uh, but stake value is about 82.3 billion dollars as there's 75 percent of the coins staked <clears throat> if you're not staking your solana you're wasting money is basically what they're giving to you now same thing for most of these things if you guys want a staking tutorial by the way let me know in the comments down below i might actually pull up with that could actually be fun too as these numbers are just, it, it's really insane if you start thinking about it, huh? How much money is just being staked there, but also how much money people are making. Because 7% a year, those are just juicy numbers to get on your Solana. So if you start out with 100, no, let's say 100 Solana. At the end of the year, you have 106.8 .6 Solana for free. You know, you didn't do anything for it. It's just, it keeps making you money. Now, this crazy article that we talked about at the start here, holy smokes. What in the world is going on here? What in the world is going on here? A teen arrested for stealing crypto worth $36 million in Canada's biggest crypto theft. SimSwapper teen purchased rare username in online games with stolen crypto. Uh, however, he basically is, again, a sim swapper. What he does is he... You, okay, let's, let's not say exactly how he does it, but what they basically do <clears throat> is they try to steal your crypto by hacking your account, by getting your um, password or whatever from swapping the sim. And that's a certain attack that they go for, in which the predator, a perpetrator, whatever, swapped the victim's mobile SIM card with a fake to remotely intercept his identity, password, account on crypto exchanges, and two-factor authentication security measures. Sad stuff. Very, very sad. I didn't understand really how he made $36 million, which is insane. And I'm also not really sure how he got away with it for so long, I guess, because that takes a long time to earn this much money. Then again, good that they caught him now, hopefully, huh? Because he's been arrested, yeah. Hopefully, uh, all the guys in that little operation get arrested because this greed is such a such a interesting thing in the crypto space. I don't get why people want so want to steal from others in this sense. I don't I don't really get it. You know, another person might have worked so hard to get that little bit of juicy juice. You want to take it away from them? Maybe you know they want the money. I guess maybe even more than you. Uh, I guess not because you're stealing it from them, so you must run it really really bad. But damn, yeah, I always feel 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 some sort of way whenever I read this type of stuff. It makes you feel sort of strange yeah and the last one was the barbados one but we already covered that once more really really nice steps toward the right direction the idea is not to pick a winner the metaverse is still very young and new and we want to make sure that we build is transferable across meta worlds so very juicy uh, i'm not sure that anybody's actually going to use this but it's a good step into the right direction because you can see it from this perspective as well you know there's literally for example right the way that i see it you're in a metaverse the, the guys that um, are working at the, the embassy don't have to leave their home. <clears throat> They're, for example, all going to join the metaverse, sit behind their little desk in that little metaverse, and you can literally walk in without leaving your house. You can walk in and talk to somebody where you can actually see them and do stuff as well. Then again, it's kind of the same thing as like a phone because 
I don't really know, you're still only talking to each other. However, you could kind of see like an avatar and maybe if some new ways for verifying identity come along or, you know, some, some proper um, in logins, for example, through this embassy type of metaverse would come out there. Yeah, it could be a juicy thing. It could literally be so. All right, guys, but that was it for today's video. Hopefully, you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe, and I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today as we have so much stuff to cover on this channel. For example, the airdrop guide. It's coming out, so stay subscribed for that.